Hello friends and welcome back to another episode here on the channel. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and in today's episode we're going to be continuing on with our Series 7 content and featuring another new team. Now today's team, I've got to give a big shout out to Prince VGC over on Twitter. He's an Italian player and he has actually hit number one rank in the doubles rank right now in Series 7 with this particular team and he was kind enough to share the paste and the rental code for the team and I thought it would be really nice to actually feature this team on the channel considering it's doing so well. As you can see I will leave all of Prince's socials down in the description below but here he is uh, put a tweet out with the poker paste and then his rank there number one very good but big congratulations for that it's a big accomplishment getting to number one and uh, obviously the team is performing really well so as you can see the team on your screen in front of you now it is the Urshifu, the Reggie Alecki, Whimsicott, Lapras, Landorus Theory and Form and Amoongus. So he's actually given me a few notes which I'll kind of transcript whilst we're playing the games today as we always do and then I'll throw up the rental team at the end of the episode. So hope you enjoyed today's episode and without further ado let's find our first opponent. Okay first up today we've got a team of Chandelier, Melotic, Kanto Marowak, Crobat, Cortana and Umbrian. So a very interesting team. Not the kind of combination of Pokemon you generally look to see um, from your opponent. But we will approach it like any other match. Now they've got Tailwind support from the Crobat. Max Airstream support there as well. Uh, Trick Room on the Chandelier. Um, and they've got probably, I would say, Lightning Rod definitely on the Marowak. Which makes it a little bit difficult to deal with the Melotic with Lapras. So we're going to have to rely on something else. Now I think... Hmm, okay, we'll go Whimsicott, Lapras here. I think we definitely want Urshifu. It helps deal with like the Umbra and the Cortana. It can do good damage to the Melotic. Hits the Chandelier for super effective damage. And hmm, do we want Reggie Aleki here. It's a very good Pokemon to bring in. Like, if we can deal with the Marowak early on, then Regieleki can do a really good job. Bringing it late makes it very difficult for us to, to use it because if the Marowak's still on the field, Regieleki is going to be kind of handicapped against doing very much. So let's get into this first one. Let's see if we can get through it pretty quickly. Uh, I'm kind of interested as well to see what this team is going to be doing as well. It's... um. Like I said, not the most common bunch of Pokemon, but there's obviously a, a, a strategy behind it. So maybe we get to see it, maybe we don't. Um, okay, so Crobat and Chandelure. Makes it tricky for setting up our, our, um, our Tailwind, in all honesty, because I'm kind of tempted to double into the chandelier because i feel like we probably see a trick room here maybe like is my opponent's team kind of set up for trick room i guess with the marowak it, it could it could definitely do some stuff and i would imagine chandelier be sashed this is why i want to but it means we're not going to get a turn of okay i think we have to go all in on this go guys into chandelier moon blast to break the sash and then hope that whimsicott's still around the next turn and we can get our Tailwind up. Now this could be pretty bad. This looks like the Crobat's going to be maxing here. But it's actually the Chandelure. Uh, okay, we're not going to see any sort of Trick Room. But the Max Geyser will be of some use, I guess. Probably going to see them go Max Flare and try and get rid of the Whimsicott. Which means we will probably lose our Wimmy here and access to Tailwind. It's so difficult against speed like setters where you've got Crobat that could set the Tailwind and you've got Chandler that could set the Trick Room. It throws up so many mind games for you. But we are going to see the Chandler max, so we have to just deal with what's in front of us. That's the best way to go around it. At least we know Wimmy is going to be around the next turn. So it means we are going to get a Tailwind up the next turn, which is always going to be useful. Max Flare coming out into Wimmy, which is fine. Like, as long as we get our... Tailwind up, we should be all right. We should be all right. And um, we're going to be able to just break a potential sash there, which is not really super useful, but you never know. Might come in handy that damage later on in this game as we get Max Geyser set at least the rain up for this next turn and kind of weaken 
the chandelier a little bit as well now we are going to get our tailwind up this next turn the, in that first turn as well we could have taunted the crowbat um oh dear it's weakness policy okay well i mean we're kind of still not in the worst situation here now we'll go for the the resonance this time into the crowbat now the crowbat could be sashed as well that's the other option here we'll get definitely get a tailwind up we'll probably see the chandelier attack into lapras here i would imagine be interesting to see who goes first thief there we go it's gonna steal our focus sash well, can you thief if you've still got an item i don't know if you can no max overgrowth wow okay keeping the rain up um we should should take this yeah just about just about uh, that's that's an interesting max move. I'm surprised they didn't want to get rid of the rain. But if we can actually take down the Crawbat here, if it's not Sash, that's a big, big help for us. Because then Urshifu can come in this next turn. Looks like we are able to take it down. We get our Aurora Veil support up. And then Urshifu's in the back to come in and help it disrupt. So there's the crawback going down. And you've got to think as well. We've got one more turn of Tailwind than my opponent as well. So which definitely helps us. Now I think we definitely bring Urshifu in. Um, we'll be able to get the Chandelier with Urshifu. It just depends what we see in next two. Okay, so it's the Umbrian. That's like super fine. That's really fine. Um, and Lapras should outspeed the... Umbrian. I mean, what's Umbrian gonna do? I mean, we go for Max Geyser for sure into the Umbrian, just get as much damage onto it as possible. Chandelier's probably going to Max Guard here, but I don't think we can afford not to target it this turn, especially because it's got the potential to pick up the knockout on Lapras, and that's like the last thing that we want. I don't think Umbrian's capable of picking a knockout on either. I could be wrong, but I I really don't feel like it's that. Like, it's never really that offensive. Like got that much offensive pressure so there's a wicked blow we are able to take the chandelier down uh that makes quick work of that and then we should be able to get off the max geyser now into this umbrian should do enough damage um then we see life orb with the rain up i don't expect it to pick the knock up out but no umbrian is just too much of a tank but it's going to be in range next turn and we'll see a foul play yeah it's not quite enough to get lapras so yeah we weren't too wrong there but we are going to go down to life or recoil damage with lapras next next turn so we need to be very mindful of that and we'll be able to see what my opponent's last pokemon is which is going to be that Panto marowak okay well that's our max turns finished um okay well i think Yeah, we've got to prioritize. With Reggie Alecki in the back, we've got to prioritize the Marowak. Taking the Marowak down. We just have to. Um, I just worry about protecting here. Which wouldn't be great. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get the Wicked Blow off into it anyway because Urshifu's Unseen Fist. So, we can break the Detect, which is always nice. Actually, we pick up the Knockout. I didn't know if we would be able to. We are banded, but still, you kind of do worry sometimes. And with that gone, the Lightning Rod's gone. Reggie Lecky can come in and just kind of clean this one up for us. So, pretty straightforward. And we don't even need it. We just get the, the Knockout with the Lapras. So, a nice game, a quick game for us to kick off with today. And it just shows a bit of the explosive power of the team, I guess. Um, but like I say... Even though you come across these teams that are a little bit awkward, like you can't really underestimate them and it throws up a lot of mind games, especially with the speed control techs that they've got. But um, thankfully, we came out on the better side of that one. And with that, we will move swiftly on to our second game of the episode. Okay, so next up, we've got a team of Talonflame, Urshifu, Latios, Magnazon, Amoongus, and Lapras. So the only new inclusion that we've got from the Crown Tundra Pokemon that we've had uh, recently in Series 7 is the Latios, which is kind of interesting. Um, Magnazon causes a lot of problems for Lapras, especially if it maxes and it starts getting its uh, defense boosts up, then it could be a bit of a problem. And we've also got the Lapras Mirror here, which could be a little bit tricky for us. Um, okay, Talonflame as well kind of provides an undeniable ability to 
get their tailwind up. Now, it makes it quite awkward to bring Whimsicott, especially if they've got dual wing beat, which could pick up the knockout onto Wimmy. Um, hmm. They're definitely leading Talonflame, so I think they've got no fake out. We'll, we'll lead Regieleki. And I think, do we lead Whimsicott as well? Because I think when we can perform a decent job for us here, I think we do lead it because we split my opponent's kind of decision making. Uh, I think we want, we definitely need Urshifu and it's just down to whether or not we want Lapras or Landorus in the back. Um, and I think we'll go Lapras because I think Urshifu's more than capable of dealing with the Magnazon. The Amoongus on my opponent's team does worry me slightly. The redirection could cause us a few issues. But if we can get Lapras into a good position, then we can make like quick work of it. We've just got to kind of maybe prioritize getting our Tailwind up if we can. Um, and I think with Regieleki, we can probably do that because we can stop my opponent at least attacking Whimsicott with, with Regieleki. Because if they go Tailwind, then we'll go Tailwind. But we can also... Ball switch out. Um, do we go Electro Web? Electro Web isn't a bad play, but I kind of would prefer because I want to get Lapras onto the field as soon as possible. I think we go Electro Web, and I think we go Tailwind. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll get a Tailwind up. We'll prioritize our Tailwind. They go Tailwind. We go Tailwind, and we'll get an Electro Web off. And if we lose Regieleki here, I'm kind of all right with that because we get Lapras onto the field and they are only plus one at the minute, both my opponent. And we actually take down the uh, Talonflame, which I wasn't expecting. Of course, with the choice specs, making it an even more potent Pokemon. And there's a Wicked Blow. Please be into Regieleki. This is ideal. Okay, so this is the perfect kind of scenario for us now. The Urshifu, which would otherwise threaten our Lapras, is now minus one the only issue would be here if we see magnazon come in and that could cause us a few issues but at the same time we do have fake tears on whimsicott so we can we can make use of that we get our resonance up against the urshifu now okay it's latios so that's that's fine that's super fine so well max get our resonance up and i think we just did we just go for a, a moon blast we just moon blast Latios. I think we do. I think we do. I mean, we could go for fake tears into it. We might be better fake tearsing it. Although, no, let's just moon blast. Let's just moon blast it. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Better just to get damage onto it. I think right now, like we're not gonna lose Whimsicott here. They aren't gonna be able to double into us. I wouldn't have thought. Um. Unless the Urshifu isn't, isn't choice locked and then it could suck a punch Wimmy, but it's kind of risky as well because Wimmy's one of those Pokemon that's kind of known for the more supportive element. And I hope, I hope, hope, hope that this is not weakness policy Latios as well. Because again, this, it could be one of those Pokemon that's quite easy to slap a weakness policy onto Latios. Definitely one of my favorite Pokemon. 100% one of my favorite Pokemon. I do love it. And uh, we definitely will will be featuring it on the channel. Um, I think it's an incredible Pokemon. It's going to be hard to use in this format. I think every new generation, it gets a little bit more difficult to use Latios and some of those older legendary Pokemon just because of the new Pokemon that are coming into the format. But I think there's still a way to uh, to to make, make use of these Pokemon for sure. Right. Well, there's a Moonblast. Uh, doing some decent actual really good damage to it produces a special attack as well, which is very helpful and no weakness policy max flare coming out Wow, okay uh, Into Wimmy does take us down to our sash And we're gonna get the resonance off into the Urshifu it has just protected so we're not going to be picking up the knockout there this turn but we do and are going to be able to get our screens up which is very very useful Problem is, as well, I think with the 
the Urshifu. Um, is it worth getting our rain up? Like, what are they potentially... Yeah, I think we do. I think we get the rain up now. And I think we go for... We just go for another Moonblast into the Latios. Or oh, Fake Tears. Because I think one of the things we could see from the Urshifu is just go for a Sucker Punch into Whimsicott and at least this way we get a, a, an extra turn out of um okay just max Wormwind this is going to be into the Lapras which is fine so we're going to be able to take down the Urshifu now with our max geyser even though we are in the the, the sun I think the Urshifu is at such low health that we will be able to to deal with it pretty well <gasps> it's scarfed it's scarfed Urshifu that's nuts well, it might not be scarfed, actually. We just got a very slow Lapras. I would have assumed, though, that minus, like, plus one Lapras at plus two would pick up the knockout. Again, it should be probably taking a, a, a closer look at the Lapras. That's just down to me not examining the team enough before coming into this episode. So we do take a little bit of damage, additional damage that we probably didn't need to. Um... And the Magnus on the last Pokemon. Okay, well, I think Urshifu is going to be actually kind of alright dealing with both of these Pokemon. In all honesty, like a Moonblast is going to do some huge damage to the Latios. Um, the Max Geyser will be able to. Yeah, and I think we just Moonblast. Yeah, we'll go for that. I think just Moonblast and Max Geyser. Like a Geyser should take down the Magnus. So we're going to see the Max God. Unless it's sturdy, of course. And then the Max Geyser probably won't take it down. Oh, this is a very fast Magnazon. Oh, it's got Electro Web. Okay. It's quite a nice tech on Magnazon. does actually add speed the Lapras as well. So this Lapras hasn't got really any speed investment. Maybe the one thing I would say about this team, if I was to say anything, is when like when I, in, in the past with my Lapras teams with the Tailwind, I do tend to like to have speed on my Lapras to get the jump on things at plus one where possible um, and I think you get a little bit more out of Lapras in that respect because you think oh I could just put it in defense but you don't technically need the defense if you're going to attack first so you need to kind of look at it that way almost but I think we're all right right now because uh, we can just suck up and suck up and suck up and Latios which will get rid of it um we could just protect Lapras as well, if we want. Because it's probably going to Electro Web, I would imagine. Yeah, let's suck a punch to the Latios and protect Lapras. So there's a first sucker punch, which will get rid of the, the Latios. And then by protecting Lapras as well here, because Lap uh, Urshifu shouldn't go down. Um, what we're going to do is kind of force my opponent into attacking. Um, because if they've got any sort of setup move or status move that they try and stall our sucker punches out with, then at least Lapras is there and it's going to be able to attack um, on behalf of our side of the field um, and pick up the knockout, whatever happens, and there's the battle cancelled. So... There's two games. We're only 18 minutes in today, so we could potentially have another one. I think let's have another game because this is a rental team. It's nice to feature the team as much as possible. So we and these games feel super fast. So what we'll do is jump into another game and we'll uh, hopefully be back very quickly with our next opponent. Okay, we've got our next opponent of the episode and probably the final one of the day, friends. And it's against a Tornadus, Heatran, Togekiss. Mess? Is that? No, it's Uxie, isn't it? Uxie. Uh, Rillaboom and Glastria. So we've got the Trick Room mod with the Uxie. Um, I'd imagine supporting the Glastria that way. We've also got Tailwind support as well from the Tornadus. Which makes it a little bit tricky. Um, but again, we could potentially go Taunt on Whimsicott. That might be an option for us. Um, I think Lapras is quite good here uh we need to be very careful around the rillaboom though that's the the one thing that we need to be very very cautious about i think we'll go whimsicott i think we'll go reggie Alecki. i think we'll go lapras in the back and it's down to maybe urshifu urshifu feels like it could like 
The hmm, HV is probably decent here to be honest because it handles like the Heatran, the Glastria, the Rillaboom pretty well. Just the other three, the, the Psychic and two Flyers that, that worry me. But I mean we do have Regilecki and Lapras that can both come in and kind of do a decent job against those Pokemon. Landorus isn't a bad shout here as well, especially for the Intimidate against Glastria. It's always going to be useful to Intimidate a Pokemon like that. And the same kind of goes for Rillaboom. Um, and also having the, the, the Max Quake for something like Heatran is very useful as well. This could be quite tricky, but let's just take each turn as it comes and uh, not try to make any mistakes and see if we can kind of come out of this on the right side. I hope we will. I'm pretty sure we will. It's a good team. It's a solid team. It's very, very offensive. We just need to keep an eye on um, speed tiers and things like that. Okay, now we do have the option here where we could potentially go Taunt into Tornadus and Electroweb. And does my opponent really have anything to switch in? Not really. Nothing that resists Electric on their team. Um, and that kind of prevents a Tailwind. If they go for the Tailwind here, then at least... Um, yeah, I think we do that. I think we Taunt. Prevent the Tailwind. Okay, protects. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more tricky. Try and get the taunt. We'll take a heat wave probably for our troubles. But we do get an electro web off. Uh, the other option here would have been just tailwind and, and volt switching. Okay, but we get some nice damage into the heat and lower its speed down as well by one stage, which is always useful. And the earth power coming in. Okay. Now we will lose Regieleki pretty freely here. Uh, Heatran on. Minus one. And now my opponent's in a little bit of an awkward position where they know we got torn. So what they probably won't go for a tailwind this next turn. Because it's such a waste. So I think this is where we go for tailwind. We go for resonance into tornadoes. And then we can maybe taunt it the next turn. I feel like that's probably the best play right now. For us, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Heatran's got to feel very vulnerable here as well. Minus one. Um, probably thinks the Lapras might add speed. It depends what the speed stat is on the Heatran as well. You know, the, the beauty about Heatran is one of those Pokemon. It can be quite fast. It can be quite speedy if you want it to be as well. And it can be quite slow and bulky. And we are going to see it switch out. So that's ideal. Um, especially the best case scenario will be if we don't see a Tailwind from the Tornadus. That would be, be perfect, perfection. We are going to get a max resonance up as well, which is it's really important for us, I think, at this point. Because if we get a Tailwind up here, and the Tornadus attacks, uh, with the Rillaboom coming in, it does complicate it, because obviously the Fake Out support kind of disrupts the ability for us to shut down the Tailwind, potentially the next turn. Um, but we'll just, like I say, we'll just have to take one... Thing at a time we could have been really ballsy and went for the resonance into the heatran predicting the, the switch out but never know we might just see a tailwind from my opponent might just go for it we don't if they're not sashed i think we we could lock this game it doesn't look like they are sashed we're going to be able to take down the tornadoes which is huge huge for us honestly that's that's massive because we stopped that speed control that option there yeah okay Always worry about Sash Tornadus. It's such a good item to have on Tornadus. Makes it so difficult to play around, especially when you've got things like Rillaboom with Fake Out support to come in and uh, really disrupt. Now we're in a great position to Fake Tears the Rillaboom and go for the Resonance into it th in this next turn because I think we need to. Uh, I think the Rillaboom's probably going to max. Um, and if we aren't able to remove it from the field, it could get quite tricky. Now this is the other awkward thing where we could see it... it um, a trick room setup. So we've got we've got to go for the taunt into the Uxie. Um, I think do we mind? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've got to stop the, the we've got to stop. We've got to stop. Ah, uh, this is a this is the annoying thing where huh, they're gonna fake out Whimsicott, I think, and go for trick room, hundred percent. They're going to fake us out. I think we just need to get as much damage. I'm going to try and get rid of the Rillaboom and punish that fake out play and let them set the, the Trick Room up. But we're not going to see that. We're not going to see it. 
We're not gonna see it. Okay, well, we can stop the trick room, I guess. It's just we should, we really needed to probably go for the fake tears. Um, and the Uxie coming in throws those mind games up into your head where you, you kind of have to split your decisions. So it's a nice play from my opponent, making it difficult for us. Actually seen a max guard, so we might see this trick room after all. Unless there's a mental herb there, which hopefully there's not. Oh, there is, there is, there is. <laughs> No, that's the one thing we did not want to see. Memento. Huh. Okay, well, that makes things way more difficult, but we still got a speed control, so. Um now we do we like minus two now. Minus two attack, minus two special defense. Which makes things very tricky for us. But we do have Urshifu in the back. We still got plenty of options, I think. Just take a look at that Pokemon. Yeah, minus two, minus two. Hmm. Now, what we could potentially do here is go fake tears into Rillaboom. Do we want to just resonance now and then allow Urshifu to come onto the field? And then we can maybe double up into Urshifu, uh, Rillaboom the next turn? Because that would still put... This is tricky. It's tricky. Because then we just delay things by a turn. Um, now let's get some damage onto it now. And get a fake tears into it. Because then we can double up into it the next turn with Urshifu. Yeah, the Heatron going to protect. And we can Moonblast. Moonblast and Wicked Blow into it the next turn. Or maybe even concentrate down into the Heatron the next turn. Okay, we get... Uh, is that a crit? Not even a crit. Okay, that's super fine. I didn't expect it to do that much damage. Especially after the memento. Okay, and we actually survived that, which is perfect. Now, I think we're going to be alright. Because a Moonblast should take down the Rillaboom. And a Hydro Pump should take down the Heatran. Okay, well. This is a lot more, like, worrying than it's actually turned out to be. Uh, Lapras doing way more damage there and the fake tears coming in super useful so we've still got one turn of tailwind left which is ideal so we can just hydro pump into the heatran and if it hits we will be fine we'll be able to lock this one up a moon blast going to be more than enough to take down this rillaboom now um there's a moon blast minus two yeah so that's the rillaboom dealt with and we are going to be able to go three and three for today pick up the turkey and um Get another nice win and oh, of course, of course it misses. Of course it misses. <laughs> I talked it up far too much for it not to miss. Okay, well our tailwind pit is out. We can go for another tailwind if we want right now. Which I think we will do just to make sure the Lapras had speeds of Heatran. I'm not 100% sure otherwise that we do. Um, and we may see. And um, we'll rely on Lapras actually hitting this hydro pump come on lapras get your goggles on get your goggles on and hit this hydro pump that's all we need you to do let's do this come on trust you lapras be a good lapras there we go good lapras and it should get the knockout with the life or no you try and taking that like a champ like a true champ procking a weakness policy as well but i mean we're all right if we see a heat wave here it'll clear the field um yep Unfortunately, Lapras actually dodges it. Makes up for that Hydro Pump miss. Uh, and then we've got Urshifu to come in. So, I mean, we're, we're sitting pretty comfortable at the minute. We're fine. And we'll be able to wrap this one up. And then I can get that rental team for you, friends. The Aurora Veil finally wearing off. Grassy Terrain leaving the field. And Urshifu can come in and clean up for us. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't really the best start this game. Losing the Reggie Alecki like we did made things difficult. But also at the same time, it kind of created a position for us where we could get Lapras on the field and start doing the damage that we wanted it to do. Because otherwise, it would have been very difficult. Now, 
yeah, there's the battle cancelled. A very good game to my opponent and a nice three games for us to feature today with his team. Um, so all I would advise is definitely once to get the rental team up, give this team a try and uh, obviously follow Prince VGC if you uh, want to see more teams from him on his Twitter account. As I say, all the socials will be linked down in the description below. So let's hop over now and get you guys this rental team. Okay, friends. So here is the rental team from Prince VGC. This is his Lapras team that he reached number one on the ladder with. And I hope if you try it out, you have a lot of fun with it. Big shout out to Prince as well. Again, once again for the team and giving us the chance to play it here on the channel for you guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. I have thoroughly enjoyed playing this team. It's, as I said earlier, it's nice to play Lapras again. It's one of those Pokemon that's been dominant throughout the whole kind of 2020 season. So to see it, back in series seven and still being a very dominant force with the likes of whimsicott urshifu and then the new kind of members coming along with the landers and regilecki kind of building this core up even more and, and making it still a very potent force is nice to see so like i say i hope you've enjoyed it we'll wrap things up there have a great rest of your day and um i'll see you for another episode very soon so until then friends take care of yourselves and bye bye